So we all know that using Blur Exterminator a couple times in different ways at the beginning of our image process can really, really, it just sets our image like up for a total success. All the sharpening and all the stuff it does, deconvoluting our stars, making them smaller, all that great stuff. But there's other times throughout the images process, especially at the end when you should be using Blur Exterminator. I'm gonna demonstrate, show you guys what I'm talking about. I'm Chad, this is the Easy Astro Images channel and we are gonna play with some photons today. So the reason why I like to show this stuff is because I'm sure a lot of you guys don't watch processing videos until the end. I almost feel like sometimes we should be making our videos in reverse. Now, once again, this is nothing that I stumbled upon myself. I've seen plenty of creators do it. I will shout out Steve from entering into space because I've been watching some of his videos because I've been really checking out all this Orton effect stuff for the glow and all that kind of stuff, which I've actually been playing it with this image here. So we've got two cloned images here at the same zoom level to kind of demonstrate you guys for YouTube. And this is the stuff that's kind of hard, but what you do is just open up Blur Exterminator. You need your stars in the images because it's still gonna basically measure the changes that it needs to make off of stars. And what you wanna do is you don't wanna do anything to your stars. So you just slide all of the sharpened stars down. And then what you wanna do is actually focus on this sharpened non-stellar. Now, usually I have found out that I can, depending on the image, I can crank this from about 60 up to about as high as 80. And it will just go ahead and go strong here so you can actually see the differences. And let's apply it to this image and you can watch and see what it is gonna do as far as like sharpening the non-stellar and recover. This might be a little strong, but we'll just kind of take a look at it here and find out. So actually not too bad. So if we put the two side by side, you can just take a look and see what's going on. I'll zoom in a little bit more here and let's go ahead and match the view again. So there's the views that are matched and man, you can just really, I mean, I hope that you can see the difference on this. I'll record this in 4K and everything else. Maybe if we do the back and forth thing that people like to do, um, you can see that it's even bringing out more detail here into even that outer edge there. And I don't, you know, we can take a look at some other parts of the image too to see what it's actually doing. I mean, I see some detail recovery in here, like not a whole lot. I see it actually still doing some stuff to the stars, which is very interesting because I'm telling it not to, but it's definitely, definitely fixing up some of those details. Let's take a look at this like nice spire section right here. If we go forward on that, Oh man, it really does just kind of clean it up a lot. So what about if we did something where we don't want it to shrink our stars, but let's say that we want it to increase the star halos a little bit. So let's kind of like play with it a little bit and see what it actually does. So let's go ahead and make sure they're backed all the way out and let's apply that. Interesting that it is still sharpening the stars, but you know what? I will make note of that for future reference because again, the recovery in the detail is really where it's at. And this is for definitely for everybody, but it's really for people that don't like to use Photoshop or don't like to use Affinity Photo or something like that, where you can take this over into like the development or into Camera Raw. And you can play with like things like the clarity sliders the color, you know, you're losing a lot of stuff by not going into those programs. But, you know, I mean, I've tried to do most of my stuff in PixInsight and keep it PixInsight focused um, unless I'm really going for like the best image that I possibly can, which I know is kind of silly and anti-intuitive for an astronomy channel. But you know what I say, no APODs here. 
If you want to learn how to do that, there's plenty of other channels for that. We're about having fun and making things easy. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. And you can also use it as a way, obviously, to fine tune your stars as well. Sometimes when we are screening our stars and putting them back together and we're doing all that crazy stuff with stars, sometimes we might make them too big. Sometimes we might make them too small. So it goes pretty well with the last video that I just made that I will link up here about how we can make our stars great again. You can never have too many stars, all the stars. So appreciate all you guys. We will talk to you later. Peace.